hi, I'm Julianne Moore. And this is the Oat Seat with Julianne Moore. Today, my guest is comedian Jess Tom. Let's give them a warm round of applause. Yay, the crowd is going wild. Hi, Sean. <laughs> welcome, hello and welcome to the Oat Seat. Thank you, thank you for having me. How are you doing? I'm great, I'm great, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I'm excited that you're available and making time to like be on my couch with me. Thank you, thank you, and it is a lovely couch. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about who you are and what you do. Well, I am a New York-based stand-up comedian. Mm -hmm. Specifically in Brooklyn? I actually live in Queens. Oh my god. I know. Wow. I know, I know I, I look like I live in Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, just shattering stereotypes yeah. one by one. Tell me a little bit about what you're working on now. What aren't I working on now? Well, um, it's really, really less what I'm working on and more what I am begging other people to have me work with them on. Okay. So, I see the distinction. Yeah, I feel like as a comedian, it's a lot of like going to auditions, going to showcases, sending in writing packets for TV shows, and basically yeah. just being like, please, 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 please think I'm cute. Yeah. And please think I'm so cute that you have to see me every day. How does it feel to be coming up right now, to be part of a community? Do you feel that that informs the work you do, the projects you do? I think it's really wonderful uh, The queer comedy scene that's happening in New York right now. I think it's amazing. I really think that when I started doing comedy, that sort of scene didn't exist or it didn't mm -hmm. exist the same way. Like there were queer people in comedy, but it was more sort of like in like the downtown theater world or like yeah. performance art world. And it wasn't really as recognized as like comedy as it is right now. So I think it's really amazing to see what's been happening um, primarily here in Brooklyn and in New York. A few years back, it used to be that I would like go into comedy spaces with like cishet people and like do my little comedy. And then sometimes I would get to do like queer variety shows or queer performance shows. I would do comedy there, but they were like two totally separate things. Right. So it feels really amazing to be able to like be like a fully realized queer person in a comedy space like with other queer people with other queer people of color yeah and have us all like be able to like show out and do our thing right do you think about your audience when you're developing material or do you was that something you were doing and have you kind of mm -hmm. evolved out of that especially uh in my early years of comedy uh as a non-binary person i was like okay like, i'm gonna have to explain Right. what this is because otherwise people aren't gonna get it or they're just gonna misread me and this is the way that I like have to assert myself as who I am yeah. and now I'm like I don't really want to talk about this that much like I don't really have to I don't feel like explaining myself I feel comfortable enough with who I am right. that I don't have to be like this is what this means every single time because um, I'm tired of it I'm over it and yeah. there's other things to talk about when you like hit these milestones in your career, like how do you celebrate that? How do you feel proud? And do you feel like you're able to kind of own those accomplishments? I think that especially for Asian American people, owning our accomplishments is like, it's it's like a big hill for us. We have to get there because everything, you know, everything could always be a little bit better. Every achievement could always be a little bit more prestigious. It's second place, but it could have been first. Um, yeah which I think is something that I run up against emotionally a lot. But I feel, you know, I, I feel proud of myself. I feel, feel proud. I feel, proud of myself. Um, feel good. I feel like when I imagined my life at this point, I imagined like grandeur that like is much yeah. greater than what I have. At the same time, I've been able to do things that I never in my life imagined that I like I never thought that I was gonna like be on stage with like Rosie O'Donnell <laughs> right. like I never imagined that I would be able to be part of a comedy community that is like in itself authentically like queer people of color and comedy at the same time yeah without having to like choose to be one or the other thing I never imagined that when I was starting out in comedy that's so incredible I never imagined that like I would be able to, um, you know, do like cabaret shows where people are like singing and right. people are doing multimedia and they're doing videos and they're doing sound effects. Like I never imagined anything like that. Let's do a lightning round of this or that. It's basically 
choosing this or that, one or the other. Okay. All right, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, iced or hot? Iced. Paper or plastic? Uh, paper. <laughs> Beach or slopes? Beach. Twitter or Instagram? Twitter. Mm. And that one always worries me because it means that I'm smarter than I am hot. Oh. And what if I want to be hotter than I am smart? Silver or gold? Um, oh, that's hard. I guess I have to say gold. Sandwich or salad? That's hard too. These are like very Why emotional are they choices. Be easy? These are yes, they are emotional oh my choices. God. This is the Bachelorette. Oh my god! <laughs> I just I'm like right now I'm gonna say salad. Kombucha or death? Um, I guess kombucha. Mm, fair. <laughs> I, I'm not ready to die. <laughs> and chapstick or lipstick? Chapstick. L.A. or New York? New York. Brights or neutrals? Brights, but they have to be up against black. Okay, so contrast over everything. Yes. All right. Yes. Lace or leather? Leather. Filter or no filter? No filter, be honest. Uh, would you go for 80s or 90s? 90s. Keanu Reeves or Brad Pitt? Keanu Reeves. Yeah. He's awesome. Asian, he's my cousin. <laughs> Long form or short form? Long form. Mm. Millennial pink or literally black? Okay, here's the thing. I mean, mm -hmm. black is timeless, obviously. Obviously. It will always work. Yes. Millennial pink literally has like an era in the name, which right. tells me that it is temporary. At the yes. same time, I love pink, but I have to go with I have to go with black. Okay. Black is forever with Black pink. is forever, but kombucha is now. <laughs> kombucha, Not ready to die. Kombucha is the morning soda. Okay. I want to know if you were stranded on an island, so the plane, like, it's gone down. Mm -hmm. No one died. I'm but traumatized. They're definitely not there. So you're going through the wreckage and you're pulling out three things. What are those three things? Um, I guess I want to see what <laughs> I guess I want to see what everyone's clothes look like. Right. So um, you can get like that great. <laughs> an island wardrobe. Cute outfit. <laughs> yeah, I need to look cute. Especially if I'm by myself, I need, how am I gonna self-actualize? Right. Um, I probably am gonna look for also an issue of Cosmopolitan because right. I'm trash. Yeah. And, um, and because you... people don't expect that from me. And this kind of follows into uh, pillaging people's clothes, yeah. but I do think that, um, that flight attendant uniforms are very cute. So it's... <laughs> So you're stranded and you're like clothes and then a an issue of Cosmo well, and then more clothes. I don't want to be a flight attendant. Right. I just want to. You just want to cosplay on yeah, an island. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no, no. This is important, actually. Okay. Um, sunscreen. Yeah. Sunscreen. You do need sunscreen. I'm on a desert island. I don't know for how long. Right. And you're not sure how good the ozone layer is there either. Exactly. And I cannot age my face just mm. because of this accident that <laughs> happened. We're gonna go sunscreen, we're gonna go issue of Cosmopolitan, and mm -hmm. we're gonna go, because it is this particular instance, flight attendant uniform. I really like that there's intention there. Setting Thank your you. intentions is halfway to self-actualization. Thank you. So, brava. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you <laughs> so much for having me. I'm gonna go drink this in a corner. <laughs> Mommy needs her juice.